Hey, everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of McMillan and Morrow. I'm Dr. Sean McMillan. This is my co host, Rich Morrow. What up? Okay. <laughs> and we're here. We're back. Thank you for tuning in. It's going to be a great episode. We do it all, we talk about it all. We start one place, end another place. It happens every time. So, you know, these stories are real stories. People are actually doing these things. And um, I think we can learn something from them. What are we doing today, Rich? We're going to do our best to learn from them because, man, we get so off the rails on this show. I'm excited to see where we're going to go with some of these stories. I got some good ones for you today, Doc. And today, we actually are starting off in L.A. And, um, man, do you ever have you ever played any virtual reality games? No, I don't play games. I know you don't. You really don't like games. Like, you're like oddly anti-games, which is interesting. I, I play sports. You play chess? Mm, I, I, I have played, but I'm not an avid player. Really? No. I don't know why. I just assumed you would probably be a dope-ass chess player. Yeah. No? No. Okay. Maybe one day. So, according to KTLA 5, you know Oculus? It's like the major virtual reality brand, if you don't know. Um, they created a VR set that kills you if you die in the game. What? Can you believe that? It actually kills you? That's what it says. So Is, it, is he reading this right? Yes. They created a what that does what? A virtual reality headset. Headset. That, oh, that and the thing you. will kill you if you die in the game. That's what it says. The inventor built a custom VR set he claims will kill the user in real life if they die in the video game. People are buying this? I, I don't know if it's on the market yet. <laughs> it says... Um, it's rigged with charges that will explode if the user triggers an appropriate game over screen. Oh, hell no. Effectively destroying their brain. Have we lost our minds? Hey, it's not available for sale yet. It shouldn't be available for anything at all. It shouldn't be available for discussion. <laughs> See, I, what did I say in one of these previous episodes? Doing too much and going too far. Now we're building headphones that'll kill you. If you, if you, if you lose the game... <laughs> like... That's the whole point of it being a game. Is that you don't it's actually It's a game die. because it's not real. Why should a game have real life consequences? And why are people even developing stupidity like this? And there's some dummy out there who's going to buy this. <laughs> win stupid games or play stupid games, win stupid prizes, right? And that's what they say? It's a stupid prize. Yeah, I don't know what they say. Here's what I know. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> But this story has exhausted me. So, we just got started. Check me out. The CEO, he Who should said, be arrested. He said, at this point, it's just a piece of office art, um, a thought-provoking reminder of unexplored avenues in game design. It also is, as far as I know, the first non-fiction example of a VR device that can actually kill the user, and it won't be the last. So as if gaming's not enough and being immersed in the world with some goggles and headphones and even feeling the impact of certain stuff happening wasn't enough, just like we talk about in every episode, humans always take things too damn well, far. Well, not, not just humans, evil. Evil never knows when to stop. That is well, the very evil. definition of evil. Okay. And, and this is, is heading Towards into the, evil. Very, very evil. When you create something that should be... Uh, should allow people rather to have fun and now it's killing you. It's just, just stop it. Can we just stop? Could we just stop it? He takes it even further. Creator said he wants to keep tinkering with the technology, mentioning the idea of an anti tampering feature that would prevent the headset from being removed or destroyed once it's placed on the user's head. He has not tried on the headset himself. Oh, he won't try it on. So he, he creates something that you can't take off and that'll kill you, but he won't try it on at all. It's like Russian roulette. No, it's like stupid. I mean, you got to win. I mean, if you don't, you ain't good at that game. If you ain't good at that game. <laughs> don't play. If you don't want to lose your life, don't play this no game. No mistakes. You better not mess up once. I mean, those kind of consequences already apply to real life. Real life, so you don't Why would I want that it. in a game? Just go play in traffic. Yeah, literally. exactly. Go run across the 405. Go play real life frogger. Since, since, you're, since you just like taking your life in your own hands. <laughs> that's literally what it is. Go run down to 101 in the opposite direction. But that's what extreme sports I, Just for clear clarity, I'm not advising that people do that. <laughs> we need to okay? put that on the bottom of the screen. I'm not right advising now. that people do that. I'm just saying... 
metaphorically speaking, yeah. the two are synonymous in their abundance of crazy. Who the hell would, who the hell would, and again, there's some idiot out there who is going to think that this is a great idea. Oh, they're going to think they can't lose. You know, that's it. They're going to think they can't lose. That was good. And, I mean, you watch certain sports and things that are extreme um, where you're like, wow, this person could die every time they do this, you know, in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, you see daredevils, but this, to me, like you said, it just feels evil. Like, the fact that somebody wants to even introduce this into people's minds. It's evil. At least in sports, there's a prize. You know? There's an actual thing you might win. See, now, that's what I want to know. What the hell you get for winning this game? You just get to keep your life? I know what I would want. <laughs> what? Can't say it on television. <laughs> what? <laughs> Pizza. And, and it ain't pizza. pizza. We just it's gonna not say pizza. pizza. We're going to pretend it's pizza. We're going we to call it pizza. <laughs> We're going to call it pizza. I would mean, want some pizza. Okay? <laughs> if, I, if I put on a headset that could kill me and I won the game, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me wonder, though, what would have to be someone's... I mean, the only thing that I could think of is people that were possibly suicidal wanting to play that game. That's the only explanation that I could picture for anybody even wanting to venture into that. Because I don't understand how you could put yourself in that situation, especially if he in introduces this anti-tampering thing. You can't even change your mind once you put it on. That sounds like Saw. You remember the Saw movies? But let me, hold on one second. Let me, let me push back. Because fundamentally speaking, how is that any different? than someone telling you, the proverbial you, yeah. if you mess with this person, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to break your heart. Yeah. That this person has never been faithful to anybody. That this person has never been honest to anybody. And you, the proverbial you, mm -hmm. you the audience, mm -hmm. you go right and rush in and date them anyway. You got to see it for yourself sometimes. Right. It's called putting a headset on that might kill you. It's, just, it's, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I do. It, it, there, because there are many forms of death. Absolutely. We die before we die. We die many deaths. Long before we die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when, when someone has told you and you still decide you want to date somebody or try yeah. to love somebody, and the person, it, it gets even worse. Sometimes people tell you themselves. <laughs> I had crazy. that happen I'm recently. Crazy. You don't I've nev do never that. been faithful. I've cheated on everybody I've ever been with. Okay. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. With so, your clown face yeah. and makeup on. <laughs> so so <clears throat> if I decide to date you, know what I do? I grab the headset and I put it on. Yeah, that's basically what it is. That's basically what you're doing. Metaphorically speaking, for sure. It's, it's not believing that the consequences are real. Mm -hmm. That's stuff I did when I was a kid. Like my mom would tell me, oh, that stove is hot. You touch it, you're going to get burnt. I'll touch it anyway. Up, that wall is hard. You hit it, you, it's going to hurt. I'll still hit it, <laughs> you know? And, you know, it's, we're hard-headed. And when you play, I just don't play with my life like that. Like, I have a hard enough time doing stuff that I could just get injured in, let alone dying. Rich, I've driven in the car, ridden in the car with you. But I got control over that myself. See, 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 see. I this, got control over this that is where, This is where our personal relationship comes into the show. <laughs> you know? I have, I have rode in the car with you. Is that the right tense? Ridden, rode? Ridden. ridden. Ro I rode, rode in the car in the car with you, mm -hmm. and you drive like a bat out of hell. Yeah, you drive like there's something's wrong with you. You drive yeah. like your ass is on fire, and you got to get home to pee. We got places to be, doc. You need to slow down. We got places to be, but I'm always conscious of the oh, other people around. Oh, I remember the first time I rode in the car, and I was like, "Are you okay? <laughs> like, are you angry? What's, why are you driving like this?" So we all we all on some level put our Physical lives, lives or our emotional lives in danger. You actually really we, right. we do we do yeah. it. Let's not lie. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. In some way, shape, or form, we do. We and do. Yeah. But yeah. but some of us do more than others. That's absolutely. Right. And mm -hmm. let me add to that. I think we have to be very judicious yeah. at choosing the scenario of our risk. The risk got to match the reward to me. We're going to we're going to we're going to do risk at some point. Yeah. But I'm not willing to die for a video game. And not, I'm not willing to sacrifice my heart for but a lie. But you are for pizza. For pizza. <laughs> pizza.
for pizza and pizza. <laughs> P- I, see, I, I, I created a new thing. Look, put it back on me. Put it back on me. <laughs> pizza and pizza. Pizza. Yeah. Pizza There's a t-shirt. and pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that makes me wonder, actually. <clears throat> so do you think that there is something... Do you think there's something that everybody's willing to die for? Everybody has something they're willing to die for? Like right now? No. No. I don't think, I don't think most people are aware enough, mm-hmm. conscious enough. I don't, think, I don't think most people are principled enough mm-hmm. to get to the place where they'll die for something. I think most people will inadvertently die mm-hmm. at the hands of something, something, but they're not dying for it. Mm. I think those who find something for which they are willing to sacrifice their lives are the extraordinary ones. They are. They are the ones who conquer fear. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are not afraid of the night because they've made a determination that this is the direction that I'm going in. The, the, The New Testament says about Jesus, sorry people, the New Testament says about Jesus and he set his face to go to Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. meaning he was determined to go. He wasn't nowhere else. Even if he had to die. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I feel like throwing my shoe. Yeah. Because. (laughs) Aaron, you better watch out. (laughs) (laughs) Because when you have that kind of determination and focus, Mm -hmm. who can stop you? Nobody. I mean, who can get in the way of somebody who said. I'm going to die for this. It's like, oh, well. you, you know, you know how far you have to go to beat that. You have to at least be able to match it. Yeah, I got to be willing to die for it. Too. Listen, that's a, that's a great thing. That's a great thing that I that I that I used to say to my sons. I used to say, if you ever see me arguing with somebody, because I don't really don't argue with people. Yeah, no. But if you ever see me <clears throat> arguing with somebody, it's because I've determined that I'm willing to go all the way. I'm willing to go all the way. Yeah, okay. I'm willing to go all the way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And what are those things that you feel like push you closest to that point? Oh. Principles? No, I'm not going to fight you over Respect. no principle. No, I, I, I'm not so big on being disrespected that I'm willing to, mm-hmm. you That's know. Why I'm wondering what it is. And you know, I'm not... I don't know. Like I, I, slap your mama or something in front of you. Like. Yeah, I probably beat your ass. Yeah, you slap my mama. It's probably on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's probably gonna get you hurt. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not that kind of reactionary person. Me I'm, I'm very thoughtful. Yeah. And I, I'm. I'm always deciding. Is this worth it? Yeah. Nah. See, that's the thing. Like I said earlier, the risk has to match the reward. Like there has to be something that either burns inside of you so bad that you're like, I want this that bad. Or I don't want this that bad that I'm willing to die for it. But I don't think, like you said, many people have principles enough that are strong enough that they would feel like that about anything. I met a guy the other day. Oh, my gosh, this dude scared the hell out of me. I'm not even going to lie. I was with a vegan friend of mine, and um, he's asking about the menu at a resort we were at. And, um, you know, his girlfriend you know, is telling, you know, the guy that works there, like, he's vegan, you know, so we want to make sure that whatever we order doesn't have, you know, anything that's going to have meat or anything in it. And the guy goes, ah, that's crazy. Um, I just started a carnivore diet. And he thought it was funny, like, just making a joke or whatever. And they got in this super passive-aggressive, you know, kind of argument. My friend that's the vegan Mm -hmm. and the guy that works there, right? Because the guy that worked there had to be nice because he's at work. It was a super passive aggressive conversation, real awkward. And I'm sitting there like, wow, I'm watching this guy that's like worshiping meat talk to a guy that's spitting facts about vegan. <laughs> so, but what I, what I learned from the guy that was a carnivore, we were asked, he was asking him about the environment and like, how do you feel about the deforestation of this and this and da 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 da? And the guy said, I don't give a shit. I don't, have, I don't, I don't plan on having any kids or anything. So he's like, oh, so you just don't care. And he's like, yeah. He's like, once I'm gone, what, what difference does it make? I don't plan on having kids. I don't care about the environment. I don't care about. And I looked at him and I was like, do you have any family or anything you care about? The people, the kind of people scare the hell out of me. Like you could just seriously tell though, he did not care about what happened to any of us. But hold up. So the guy that didn't want him to eat meat thought that. Hold on. 
thought that the waiter should should not eat meat because of deforestation of No, farms? he was just talking about Because I mean, that's giving, not a compelling reason for No, me. no, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. that. But I was saying he was actually giving him, you know, real rebuttaling with facts because he's actually really educated on, you know, he's been a vegan for six, seven years. Mm-hmm. So he's giving this guy facts about, you know. About what it, that, yeah. yeah, that he's trying to combat for being, you know, a carnivore. But your point is the guy, the waiter didn't care and people who don't care or just walking around right. life without giving a damn if all of us just, you know. Well, but but let, let me defend the waiter, mm-hmm. okay? Because mm-hmm. I think the waiter was probably saying he didn't care about that. No. He said, I'm not going to have kids one day. Therefore, I don't give a shit if the ozone burns up in 100 years. Hopefully, it just doesn't happen in my lifetime. And all of these different things that were just around the fact of, well, I'm not going to be here once I'm gone anyway, so who cares? And I'm just like, damn. But, but here's the pushback, because this, mm. this, this got interesting. I would argue that ultimately nobody at the table cared either. I mean, I care if I have kids. And... No, hold on. Hit, hit me out. I would argue that nobody at the table cared. Okay. Because everybody at the table participates in an economy and in an ecology that destroys the environment. So the vegan has an iPhone in his pocket. Yep. Or the Amazon account. <laughs> Come on, Dr. Sean. We all contribute. I'm we just do. saying. So the I'm just saying. So the what it, what it, what is the we 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 indict the waiter for not caring. But it's the degree but the to vegan, which we don't care. But the vegan with the facts has an iPhone in his pocket, <laughs> an Amazon account, and he's wearing Nikes. You're right. You're right. He's participating as much as the one who doesn't care. Yeah. Well, he wasn't wearing Nikes, but I he could be wearing sandals. Yeah, he was wearing sandals. that he made. <laughs> but yeah, I get what you're saying, 100 percent on that. I do. But I guess the point that I was making was just knowing that there's people that are walking around who don't that, care, that just don't give a damn. I, I accept that. It's a great point. The point I'm making is don't be self righteous. Yeah. Not to you, but to to your friend. People, yeah. Don't be self-righteous. Just because mm-hmm. you're right on this issue doesn't mm-hmm. mean you're totally right on everything. Exactly. And you may not be sufficiently right on this. Because you're still guilty of some a lot of the same things that yeah, the person that absolutely. you're chastising. That's with. why I, I have friends of mine who are socialists, and I just laugh at them. <laughs> with your Apple laptop, you're a socialist. <laughs> but our world has also been built in a way where it's very hard to avoid doing things that are going to be, yeah. you know. Hard. If you're committed to something, and Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem, you think that was easy? You think it was easy, people? But people see what happened to Jesus, and they like, well, (laughs) And that's what makes him extraordinary. Exactly. And everybody else common and basic. And fearful. Come on. And that is living out of fear rather than for the principle that you're speaking on. The principle ones... Shine, you know them. Mahatma Gandhi, yeah. Martin King, Mandela, all of them. Madiva, <laughs> Mandela. Yes, yes. principal one. Principles. They stand out. I like that. But let's go to the next topic. All right, I think we can wrap that one up. But um, you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. So, according to Forbes, I actually heard about this, and I think it's super dope because I'm pretty sure um, this was started in Atlanta. You like the word dope. Yeah, it was started in Atlanta. I was right. Um, there's a black man that started this. There's a new ride-sharing app called Black Wolf. Have you heard of it? Mm. It's just like Uber, except the drivers are certified to carry weapons for extra protection. From who? So it's basically like armed security as a driver. So the you call word? Uber. You living in Atlanta. You living in Memphis. You living in one of these cities where crime could be high. You call a Uber black. Speaking you, of that, hold that thought. Hmm. Hold that thought. Go for it. Okay. Go for it. Remind him where he was going. Did you know that Memphis is the most dangerous city in America proportionally? I'm not surprised. <laughs> Have you heard what's been going on there the last few years? There, there are about 600,000 people live in Memphis, a little more than that. How many? About six, 700,000 people okay. live in Memphis. Okay. okay. And they have like, oh, I want to say, let me, let me not get the numbers mm-hmm. wrong. But the crime rate proportionally in Memphis is 237% higher than the national average. Jeez. While the crime rate in Chicago is only 67% higher than proportionally the than the national average. Memphis is a lot more dangerous than Chicago. Wow. But we don't what hit. you just said, it's about three, four times as dangerous. Yes. I don't know why I wanted to go there. 
But it's a crazy fact. But, you know, people talk down about Chicago. <laughs> And, you That's know, why you wanted to go there. Y'all you leave wanted Chi- to clean y'all leave, Chicago's y'all leave Chicago up alone, y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chicago's bad. 67% higher than the national mm-hmm. average is bad. No, it is bad. But 230% more of something <laughs> is a lot worse. That's a now, go back to where you were going. first of all. Go back but, to where you were going. So, you know, there's this app that, you know, a guy developed where he wanted people to feel safer and, you know, and you can carry people. guns. The, the driver can carry guns. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's people that, you know, they're, they're traveling. You even got women that feel safer in this regard when, you know, they're traveling. And, you but know, what if the to, driver's a nut? Well, they have to go through extended background checks to be drivers for this. They, you can't just sign up like Uber and Lyft. What if the driver just turns around and pulls out his gun in the middle? I, listen. Yeah, you know, I don't I, trust. I, I don't want <laughs> First of all, let me just say this, people, and maybe because I'm old. I don't go no damn where where I need a gun. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't frequent those kind of places. Yeah, it said according to I the owner. I just don't. I'm not done talking no, to the good. people. Don't be interrupting me. I'm having my little moment over here. <laughs> I don't go to those kind of places where I need to carry a gun to make sure I get home. Yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. All right. We zoom. Let's get on zoom. <laughs> <laughs> we we ain't gotta in be your in the area same that room. bad. We can just no. hop on the phone. <laughs> no, no, no. Where are you going? <laughs> but I mean, you know, there, it's it's getting crazy. I mean, I feel like since the pandemic, things have gotten. And more tougher. guns are gonna make it better. No, I don't agree with that. But, no, it's not. But but I will say, um, for people where it makes sense, and maybe you're traveling and you got a lot of jewelry or this or that. Not to say that the driver couldn't set you up himself, you know what I mean, and take you wherever they wanted to take you. But they do have things in place where, like, I know that there's tracking that it allows, you know, so say say you have a kid and you want them to get picked up and taken somewhere, you can track their ride and actually see video footage of them in the car the entire time as well and know that they have an armed driver. I'm going to send somebody I know to pick up my kid. Yeah, no, I got you. Not some random, rando stranger. And this would probably be more expensive, too. So I would imagine more celebrities and people that probably are, you know, you know, yeah. with a little bit of status are using this. No, I, 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 that makes sense to me. Yeah. If, if you are a public person mm-hmm. and, you know, you're getting threats. I or, think that's what he designed it more so for. But when I saw him actually marketing, because I really did see the story myself, too. Um... When I saw him marketing it, he was using the examples of, you know, protecting our kids, protecting women, you know, protecting people that are more vulnerable, that feel like they're, you know, subject to getting kidnapped from Uber or things that have happened. Because crazy stuff has been going on the last few years around the Uber app. and Right, but it's the Uber drivers doing it. And now he's got a gun? Well, that's not owned by the same people. Well, I'm I'm, I'm proverbially Uber. I'm not talking bad about you. I'm just saying it, 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 it is... It's, it's the drivers yeah. creating the problems yeah. in, in the situation for, the, for where it was Uber. So according to the owner, he says the drivers undergo background checks and receive training in de-escalation techniques to handle confrontations that may arise during rides. Now, I let, know let me tell police you department hold does on, hold too. On, but hold on, hold on. Let me tell you a story. Because this, hmm. this is, uh-uh. Let me tell you a story. Let's go. So I was living in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Chicago. Living in Chicago, and I think I was in seminary at the okay. time. I think I was in seminary. Mm-hmm. And I was doing a lot of work with uh, gangs in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of work. I know that was Created something crazy. called the Martin King Peace Plan. We had, we, we had, a, we had the GDs, the BDs, and the, and the, and the Stones were mm-hmm. all in this community. So I was going to meet with one of the leaders mm-hmm. at, the, uh, at the house. I Because I didn't have my own place. I was staying with somebody. Mm-hmm. So... I said, yeah, man, you know, come over, let's talk. We need mm-hmm. to work this out. Something was going on. So he comes over, and we're sitting on the couch. We're sitting on the couch, mm-hmm. and he puts his coat between us, right? Yeah. You know, which is, you know. You weren't even thinking nothing of it. No, we yeah. were sitting on the couch talking. Mm-hmm. And um, so I get up and get something, some water, and I go to sit down, and I sort of leaned into the coat when yeah, I was sitting down. you could feel it. And I was. <laughs> is that a gun in there? I was like. <laughs> I said, what, what you got in this coat? <laughs> He's like, what you mean? It's, it's my coat. I said, man, there's something in this coat. <laughs> something heavy. Because the, 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 the rest of the coat gave way. He said, well, you know, you know, you got to. I said, man, I like you. I respect you. 
You're a good person. Mm-hmm. We built a great rapport. Yeah. But you got to get that gun out this house. <laughs> You're like, I do not feel comfortable. I was like, what if you get mad? Yeah. I said, what if I piss you off in the next five minutes? <laughs> like you're thinking There's literally a gun between us. Literally. That's why you put it there. I said, and you know how to work it, and I don't. So the first one to the gun <laughs> don't matter. Because if I get the gun, I'm still going to die. Because I don't know how to work one. I said, sir, you have to take that out of the I'm side. highly uncomfortable now. So. He, was like, he was like, no, no problem, no yeah. problem. He gets up, goes outside, puts it like in the bushes. Yeah, puts like, it in the bushes. Well, I, ain't leave, I ain't taking it into the hole. Yeah, he puts it in the bushes, you know. Because yeah. yeah. I said, you safe. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to happen in here. <laughs> so he, he comes back, and we mm-hmm. finish the conversation and end up doing great work. Yeah. He, he was the leader of, of, of the set. Yeah, that's so true. We did great work. Mm-hmm. And then later, years later... Yeah. I said, man, remember you came over and brought the gun? Yeah. And he laughs now. Yeah, but now yeah. he's married with kids oh, and, okay. That's and good. all that. But my point is, I don't feel comfortable yeah. with a gun around me. I don't want my driver to have one. Yeah. I just think, it, I just, it, what if somebody, my thing is, I'm always thinking worst case scenario. You do. What if you snap? Yeah. What if you. Over anything. Yeah, I don't, mm-mm. I don't even like being around police when they have guns. Yeah. So do you feel, well, I know you don't go to Florida often, but in I'm going. Case, I'm going to Florida next week. Are you really? What part? No, no, next month. Next month. Uh, next week. Next month. What part are you going to? Orlando. Okay. So you're going to be in the middle of central Florida. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel uncomfortable in open carry states like that, where you could just walk in anywhere and people just walking in? That oh, listen. Know? When I go to Florida, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> you people are crazy. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not going to hang out. Unless I'm gonna, when I when I went to uh, I was in um, right outside of Baltimore. I did a wedding. Mm-hmm. I stayed. I went to this casino. Can I say the name of the casino? Maybe not, huh? But ain't, but anyway, I went. They to got this, a problem. Oh, bleep it out. I went to this casino. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I loved it. Yeah. I don't gamble. Yeah. We're off the rails, Tyler. <laughs> we I, are. We're going to break after this. I don't gamble. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I loved about the casino was you could smoke cigars twenty four hours. Openly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> I was like, it was like a my new cigar home. <laughs> I was smoking cigars at three o'clock in the morning. Anyway, um, so when I was in the casino, mm-hmm. I was very conscious of somebody could come in here and shoot this place up. I was my, I could not get it out of my head where the exits are. Mm-hmm. If this happens, here's what I'm going to do. And that's yeah. the kind of world that we live in now. I feel the same way in places with a lot of people. I don't feel comfortable at concerts no more. I used to. I really don't. And I had a friend that was at, was it Jason Aldean that had the concert in Vegas? That I don't even know who that is. Shut up, he's a country singer. But I had a friend that was at the concert in Vegas where they were shooting off of the buildings at the club. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had a friend that was there, and he still to this day is traumatized because he was running through the field and he's seeing bullets fly past his head and people falling. And I'm like, that could happen anywhere. And New York was one of the places I also get a little bit anxious because of the subway and the lack of security on the subways. I realized anybody could get on the subway with anything. Yeah, but the riders will beat your ass. Yeah, but also, I would advise you not. At the same time, though, most of the people on the train aren't paying attention to each other. They, you know, are you know you're aware when something's happening, but for the most part, they not you know they're not paying attention to you. And when I you know, super paranoid, get on that train, and I'm looking at people getting on with all these bags, and they sitting the bags down, and they getting up, and they moving, and some people acting crazy, and then you see, I'm like, this would be a great place if, you know, I was trying to tear yeah. some stuff up. And it's I'm dangerous. like, damn, like, that kind of stuff shouldn't be something I feel like we have to live in. I don't want to live in fear ever. Well, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I, look, after, the, after the break, we'll talk more about should not have to. That, okay, that, yeah. That's an erroneous kind of way. Yeah, of, I mean. Should. But anyway, people, we're praying for everybody out there, right? Yeah. And everybody can, be safe. You can listen to us and watch us on all platforms. We got Spotify, Apple Music, all of that. Make sure you tap in. You don't have to just watch us. You can listen to us, too. I'm so. great to listen to in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hear that voice? Very soothing. We'll, we'll right be right back. back. Oh, should not have to. Should not have to. I mean, yeah, it's a shame word, but shit, shame on a fucking America. Oh. Wow, what, what just happened? <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> it went totally it's just crazy. I do be paranoid, though, around a bunch of people. I'm not going to lie. I feel that. A lot more than I used to be. I, I used to never feel like that. All right, 
let's come back from the break. Um, so did you want me to do the next story or skip it? Because you said don't read headline and then you also uh, well, that was skip. Just, I originally put that there. Just for, yeah, skip it for now. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to pivot quite a bit. The board in a prison. A little bit more feel good. Oh, yeah, you'll like this. <clears throat> okay, you ready? Um, yep. Okay. And we are back. We're back. So, according to the LAD Bible in Texas, a young mom, woman who was born in prison. The who? LAD Bible? Yeah. What is that? That's a, it's a publication. It's a newspaper? Yeah. That's a newspaper? Something like it's it. It's a publication. It's not, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a publication. It is news. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let me leave him alone before Just I get to Just think of him as a blog going. or something, probably. Go ahead, keep going. So a young woman. I was not impugning. <laughs> I was just asking for a clarification. Yeah, no. A young woman who was born in a prison is set to study law at Harvard. Okay. And, you know, she's 18. She's from Montgomery, Texas. Um, she was born in prison and she graduated from high school already. And, um, you know, her mother was incar incarcerated and she was raised by her father. Mm -hmm. uh, despite growing up in prison, she achieved outstanding academic results and she got accepted into Harvard. And she credits her mentor who provided her care and guidance for her success. But she's going on a full scholarship too. And it reminds me of you. You know, you never know. It's not about where you started out, it's not about you know, where necessarily you come from, as much as, you know, it plays a factor, it has no dictation on your greatness and your destiny and where you are meant to be. And for her to, you know, literally be born incarcerated, you know, as a baby, you know, and to make it to Harvard Law at that, she ain't just going to Harvard, she's going to Harvard Law on a full scholarship. It just shows you you know, our true potential as humans and our, you know, capability. Those are miracles. You're a miracle. She's a miracle. And I think that's super inspiring. I think, you know, if people can make it out of these kinds of situations, what excuses do other people have, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. But, but I, actually, I actually have a pushback. I know you do. You always do. Yeah. Because I was going to be great even if I didn't go to Harvard. Oh, you would. There are mm -hmm. two kinds of people who go to Ivy League schools. <laughs> One kind of person goes to Ivy League school and they need the name of the school for the name to make them something. Mm -hmm. The other kind of person that goes to Ivy League school expects the school to want to attach itself to their to name. Them. Yeah, I'm the second, not the first. Mm. Amen to that. I, I didn't. I did. I didn't need. I don't. University of Chicago is a great mm -hmm. school, and in some ways, a better school than Harvard. Yeah. But the first thing that you get from me, unless I have on a sweatshirt, mm -hmm. like, for example, let's go back to the TikTok people. Okay. So when I talk to the TikTok people, they don't know what school I went to. I don't, mm. I don't throw that. I don't give you any of that. Yeah. Now, you, when you talk to me, you know you're not talking to a dummy. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't know why I'm not a dummy. <laughs> but you know I'm not a dummy. But you know I'm not a dummy. Yeah. Because we'll get, we'll get biblical for a second. Genesis 12 says... I'll make your name great. Mm. It does not say I'll make your title great. Mm. And as I've said before, people try to do things with their title that they can't do with their names. And people try to do things with their degree that they can't do with their own reputation. And you feel that should be the goal is, um, you know, working to have your name live up to, you know, your title. Listen, the true mark of greatness is what happens to your name after you're gone. I love that. That's going to be at the bottom of the screen. That's the true mark of greatness. <laughs> yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they are still, I, 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 was, I, I was doing something for a friend, helping a friend prepare remarks or something. And I put in the remarks that, do you remember what the number one song was in 2015? Hypothetically. Let's say no. Just one to, of them, just, but no. You just couldn't no. say no. Thank no, you. I'll say no. Can you remember what the number one movie was in 2009? No. Or the number one sitcom in 2003? No. no. You have, and if you can remember, it's because... you got a I, great memory, and yeah. you probably have an attachment to it. And that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. But we are still talking about the Tuskegee Airmen. You're right. We're still talking about certain great individuals mm -hmm. whose names are still on our lips. And you can't remember who had the best song in 2011? The difference is, one is significant... And the other is not. You're right. So the true mark of greatness is what happens to your name you when you're no longer here to defend it, to advance the cause. Kierkegaard said that the love we had for the dead is the greatest love of all. I'm paraphrasing, not <laughs> quoting 
literally. <laughs> yeah. He said, it's the greatest love of all because the dead can do us no favors. So when we're, not, when we're not here and people are still celebrating you, it means you did. It's because while you were here, you mattered. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know how this relates to anything you're trying to get me to talk about right now. But it, it make, it, it's, um, it's important. It, it's valuable information. You know, I feel like um, just hearing that, it, it brings up a lot for me because even having people who are close to you that have passed away and seeing the impact they still have on your life alone once they're gone, um, whether it be grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters, um, you really do quickly get put in a perspective of what really mattered. And it's, it's how they made you feel, it's the impact they had on you. It's the thing that, things that once they're gone still live in you. And you know all of the other stuff that we may you know feel is important while people are here that we tend to focus our energy on as people. Um, I know I have definitely taken it upon myself to be more conscious of loving people while they're here for that reason, because I see people celebrated so much once they're gone. And you know, as you were talking, it th it made me think to myself. It's like it really is about how much you do while you're here for other people that gives you that love once you're gone. And if you live a selfish life, nobody's going to really be talking about you when you're gone. But if you lived your life for others and you, you spread that love, it's one of those things that you're celebrated 10 times more than you were when you were here when you do that. And it's sad when you see it happen in the young, you know, celebrities and things like that. And you hear the celebration. It's like, how did I know about this person when they were alive, you know? And then once they die, it's like, well, why is everybody talking about it now as if it's a cool thing to do? And, um, you know, it sucks because, you know, they're even making songs about it. Uh, you know, like J. Cole and Little Dirk actually just had a song that came out. And, you know, he talks about how, you know, it shouldn't take somebody dying. It's all my life. All yeah, all my, my life. life. And it, it shouldn't take you. I'm, proud, I'm proud of you for knowing down. that. First of all, let's give a round of applause for Doc oh, for knowing the name of that song. I didn't even have to say the name. And you on point with it. Look at you. I'm on, on TikTok. Point. You on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok people. I, I, I gotta figure I'm out. On TikTok. I gotta figure out what you people are doing. I'm dead. Uh, so I'm dead. See, that's another one. That's another one. <laughs> or you send skulls in the chat. It represents I'm dead. So I yeah, know these things. it's crazy though, isn't it? Like to hear though, you put it in because you always put things in such an intelligent and eloquent kind of way of understanding and making it easy. Um, to hear people celebrated though so much after they're gone, it's like, damn, I don't want to live in a world where that has to be the case. Like, you gotta die to be celebrated, you know, on that level. And we do have people that are celebrated highly while they're alive too, but they're yeah, not but, truly but, but appreciated but let, but let, until they're gone. Let me push back. Martin King was not loved when he was here. That's what I'm saying. They're not truly appreciated though he until was, they're he gone. He was vilified and hated. He was only loved after he died. It's just a common occurrence that that happens. That's not, it's, we, we're not going to stop that from happening. I know. And it's, that's it's, sad. It, it, well, it just is what it's not. It is. It's, it's sad to me. It's sure. not sad to me. It is what it is. It, it is. it is. I wish Martin Luther King got to get his flowers while he was here because he's changed all of our and lives. And I, wish I, I wish I got paid $10 million an episode. I wish I got paid $100 million <laughs> it's, an episode. It's not, <laughs> it's not the case, okay? It's not the case. I want it to be, Doc. I know. I mean, but but and that's the beauty of it, Fix right? Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? We need a hundred million dollars. I'm not leaving this chair until I get it. We can't throw temper tantrums about how it I'm is. I'm really throwing a tantrum right yeah, now I mean, for humanity. It's, it's, like. it's just it is what it is. And greatness mm -hmm. is dealing with it as it is. Yeah and still running in the directions of the things you believe the most. And still facing Jerusalem. And say, yeah, and still being willing to go to Jerusalem. Mm. They're not gonna, not let's see, we're about to get biblical, it's okay? inspiring, could you, man. Could you, just, could you just prick something in me? <laughs> so on Palm Sunday, right, okay. is when Jesus goes to Jerusalem to have mm -hmm. the big parade. Mm -hmm. Why did it take them three years to give him a parade? This man walks on water, <laughs> turns water into wine, his best miracle, by the way. Mm -hmm. Raising, because of the wine. <laughs> If you missed it. Raise dead people, all that, right? Yeah. And it takes him three years to give him a parade. He should have got a parade the first week. First day. You follow what I'm saying? Yep. 
Here's the point. Some people will never celebrate you. Mm-hmm. You have to be okay with and that. And some folks, they'll never get to the place where they give you the kind of accolade you deserve. Yeah. And it's not, any, it's not a matter of supposed to be or mm-hmm. should have. They're just not going to do it. Yeah, you're right. And if you let that Stop. become the mm-hmm. thing that stops you from going in the direction of your principles and your beliefs and your dreams, then you'll never get there. So even if you don't clap, I'm still going. Mm-hmm. You got to clap for yourself. Don't celebrate me. I'm still going. Yeah. That's why it's important to celebrate our, our wins ourselves because you can't expect other people to. That's not other people's job. It's not people's obligation. Which brings us back yeah. to the statement that you made. Yeah. And that is, if you figure it out after I'm gone that I was great, <laughs> well, better late than never. Yeah, but right. I already knew. Yeah. Mm. So I'm good. You're right. Let's move on. Appreciate that, Doc. <laughs> okay. So we're, is this westward? Yes, westward. What? I'm just taking a deep breath before I read this. What is that I tattoo you on your wrist? What is that? So this is in memory of my little brother. Um, your little brother? Yeah, my best friend's little brother. That's Jesus right, that's right. Brother. He died, that's right. So he had a um, brand called G-Rated, and I got a wristband that says G-Rated and his nickname on it. So oh, okay. I'm always wearing his rebate. This is know, new, right? Brand. It's been about a year old. Yeah, because I, I, when we first met, you didn't have that. No, no, no. Okay. It's only a year and a half old. I don't know why it took me a year to notice it. <laughs> why did it take you a year to notice my tattoo? <laughs> no, I don't know. Because you're not appreciated sufficiently. <laughs> but, yeah, no. I um, Yeah, I got it. I wanted to always be repping his brand wherever I go. So he on TV with me every day now, too. And okay. now you're going to have to cover that up. You know. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully I don't have to cover this up. <laughs> no <too>. logos. <laughs> That was a good one, Tyler. I actually give you that one. Wait, he's gonna have to cover that up? <laughs> no, he's saying that because of the like oh, okay. we're not I'm, going into that. Aaron, are you confused or just me? No, Aaron got no, it too. Yeah, I'm okay. Good. Well then it's it. just me. <laughs> Could you get to the story? I was trying to. You were. So that's true. According I, did, to West, I did that. <laughs> according to West, I did do that. Will you stop cutting me off? Can I finish Now you know how I feel. I'm doing it on purpose. I'm doing it on purpose. Validate him. So according to Westward. Denver residents could earn $1,000 masturbating as part of an orgasm advisory job. Where do I sign up? <laughs> I knew you were going. <laughs> Where, how many times can you sign up? And this is in Cause, Denver, cause so I don't... Because I'm doing it for free now. <laughs> so I so might, like, what, I what, might what, as well get paid for it. What are we it? talking about? So Hold on. Don't act like you people watching ain't masturbating. <laughs> okay? You're masturbating, too. Everybody you know is masturbating, including you. And if you're not masturbating, you probably should. <laughs> You'd be a whole lot nicer. And don't say it because I'm having sex, I don't need to. You know you're lying. <laughs> it's a lot, sex is a lot of work. Flipping people over, <laughs> being flipped over. It's a lot easier when you're by yourself. I don't, I don't know what just happened. To be clear, he's not asking you to masturbate right now, just so you know. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, just keep the show on so we get the ratings. <laughs> yeah, just make sure you pass 30 minutes. So, a UK-based sexual wellness brand and sex toy manufacturer is offering a unique job opportunity, though. And it's on their org- orgasm. I don't know what an orgasm advisory board is, but for some reason, it sounds like you need to be on, a, on that board. Wow. Um, Wow. But when you're a member of the board, though, individuals get paid, without, oh, it's only $1,000 a year. A year? Oh, no. To test and provide feedback on their sex toys. The company is recruiting board members in Denver and hosting events to educate people about the benefits of masturbation. Have you ever used a sex toy? <laughs> on some. I asked you first. I've I'm used so- it on, on people. On people. Yeah, okay. but I don't, no. No, not a big deal. I'm not an into no. sex toys. Yeah, either. I'm like, No. If I, was I, thought, a woman, I thought about maybe. I thought about buying one that I saw. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, hmm. My only problem was I had to put my name on the thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, when I no ordered way. it, they'd be like, "Is this Dr. Sean McMillan <laughs> ordering this old nasty toy? He is nasty." He says, on TV, being all moral, being all and nasty. <laughs> You can be moral and nasty people, okay? Man. They're not contradistinctive. They're not antinomies. So the company has a resident sexual wellness advisor. You should start looking for these jobs somewhere because it's a thing. 
and they emphasize the importance of destigmatizing masturbation and promoting a sex, you know, a healthy sex life. So let me ask you this: When you were, when you, I'm assuming when you were younger, you masturbated. Mm -hmm. Were you? Were you? <laughs> like you're Sorry, it's past no. tense. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, we know. You're talking about younger. <laughs> younger, younger. Mm -hmm. Did you have any shame associated with it? A little bit, yeah. but not no, no, because. But stop us before you. Mm -hmm. Before, where did you get the shame from? I don't know. I think it's probably more so from fear of not even judgment, because nobody mm -hmm. even really knows. It's just something I feel like that culture has developed a shame around. Mm. And now, in today's day and age, I mean, people, just like you said, are getting money for doing things that, you know, maybe should be done in private. I'm surprised you, know? you don't have an OnlyFans. Because I have a career <laughs> that I care about <laughs> very but, but, deeply. But what, what, what I meant by Trust that Trust me, was, I thought many a days about you signing up for... <laughs> Because everybody now who like looks a certain way has an OnlyFans. Man, you, it's, 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 don't even get me started. It's a slippery slope, okay? But. No, let's get started. We can get started. <laughs> we're so, off the rails, Tyler. Since I we're off hear the rails, about okay. This. Since we're off the rails. Living in LA, you get to see, Miami's the worst though. But it, living in LA, you get to see a lot of people that one are making a living out of literally masturbating for a living, having sex on camera, basically open prostitution at this point. Okay, that's always been going on. Good, fine, dandy, do what you do. I'm all for sex and doing what you do. But now it's been glorified and celebrated to the point where it's becoming an issue where people are rooting their value in you know, that. And to me, there's there's two different things. There's something that's natural for us as far as pleasure and, you know, being sexual human beings. There's another thing of taking advantage and sex sexually exploiting people based off of their appearance and them being okay with it. I get that. And for me, um, to have people basically, it, it, it's, it's causing a shift in everything because there's people that feel less than because they don't have the same opportunities that some of these people have just by being so open with themselves that they're willing to just, you know, do whatever on camera and get paid for it. And there's always going to be some, some hornball somewhere that's willing to pay but, them. But to the see incentive it. is financial, right? Absolutely. But, let, but let, let's, let's fold this back to where I started, mm -hmm. all right? So when you were younger mm -hmm. and you were, you were masturbating, yeah. you, you experienced shit. Why are you laughing? <laughs> you can't. It's like, that word. It's, the, it's a trigger word for him. He's like, he, Tyler, we're going to have a conversation with you about your history with this subject because you. Oh, you gotta go. You're like an eighth grader. He's, every time he hears the word, he, I was expecting me to be giggling every time you say it. Everyone said <laughs> masturbation. Well, no, no. He's <laughs> still about to laugh. <laughs> he turned red. He can't see the. Oh, He's still man. about to laugh. So my point is, I don't, I don't understand where that shame comes from. I don't either. But I also think the fear of, you know, it's not something that it's not like you were about to be like, all right, I'm living in the house with my mom or my dad and or my grandma, and I'm just gonna be like, all right, mom and dad, I'm about to go beat it real quick, make sure you don't come in my room. It was always something you kind of had to hide and be discreet about and private about. And, you know, God forbid you get walked on doing it, you get, you but, know. But you lock the door. I mean, but situations happen. And, you know, we talked about this on another episode, though. It's like, you know, the whole idea of being comfortable with putting things out there, you know, if you're okay with whoever sees it, because you know once, it's, once you send it to somebody, once you put it out there, anybody can see it. It's kind of the same situation. But like for me, I don't know. I'm not sure the shame comes from the fear of getting caught doing it as much as it is the well, stigma you, well, well, you around said it. it. You said it. Whenever you have something you feel you have to hide, yeah. you experience shame and you experience guilt. Mm -hmm. The difference between shame and guilt is profound. Yeah. You are guilty for things you do, mm -hmm. but you are ashamed of who you are. Mm. And the difference is profound. Yeah. I would much rather somebody experience guilt than shame. Than shame. Mm -hmm. And we did, we make sexual things shameful. Yeah. When if you get caught, you should feel guilty. <laughs> because you did like, do something you, that you I mean, you go. shouldn't be here whacking off. <laughs> In the middle of, we are having dinner, and you in here spraying the, the mirror. What you doing in here? But it should not, it should not induce shame. Yeah. 
Nothing about who you are is at stake in that moment. And shame will stay with you. Longer than guilt. Mm -hmm. So when my sons were, were, you know, like 12, 13, mm -hmm. and I saw the sense. Something was going like, on. Like these little Negroes. <laughs> Probably watching oh, some oh, videos yeah. somewhere. They waking something. up happy. <laughs> <laughs> Happier than they want. Happy, happy. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? There, I'm like, listen, this conversation is going to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. But, I, I, but that's the point. Mm -hmm. We can have uncomfortable conversations, and we could. So we had the masturbation yeah. conversation. My, my mom did. All right? Too. Like, my thing was, have at it. <laughs> I'd much rather you Just have at it. Blind. <laughs> Just don't go blind. <laughs> you don't go blind for masturbation. That's what they used to tell people <laughs> to get them to stop. you like, you do that too much, you're going to lose your <laughs> eyesight. So just... <laughs> <laughs> My thing was just be respectful yeah. of other people in the house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be discreet, yeah. but there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, I would love for conversations like this to be more normalized as opposed to just assuming, like you said, and using short things to, you know, kind of take shortcuts to Yeah, we good. Things. Yeah, we good. Yeah, and then that being the conversation because a lot of people never get clarity on what's appropriate, what's not. You know, mm -hmm. we are all sexual beings as humans. That is just natural. And shame, yeah. when you have to hide and you're trapped in shame, it leads to being deviant. Yeah, and that's where it gets slippery. That where, that's where it becomes dangerous. Mm -hmm. So the moment you actually liberate and protect your children from deviance, mm -hmm. when you allow them to be open, honest, and in conversation with you mm -hmm. about what they're thinking and feeling and touching. Yeah, and you can help guide them. Yeah, you can say, now, okay, th this is the boundary. <laughs> How can you set the boundary for them? If you never have a conversation. Or help them set the boundary if you, if you don't give them the opportunity to yeah. talk about what they're doing and feeling. I agree. So deviance comes from, I mean, like, this, a, a certain kind of sexual deviance is cool. Mm -hmm. Like, say the masochism. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's fine. People I'm talking about being deviant where you're hurting people mm -hmm. and doing non consensual stuff. Yeah. It grows out of shame, mm. hiding, and then that becomes the addiction. Mm -hmm. How can I get away with it? Mm. How can I do it and you don't know I'm doing it? Mm -hmm. How far can I if? Listen. Yeah. What, 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 is the story related to this? I mean, kind of, but we running out of time anyway. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, this is a good episode. We went a lot of places. We the episode is guns. over? We, went, we talked about guns, masturbation, sex, drugs, rock and roll. This is going by yeah, really man. fast. Yeah, I know. That's We've a good sign, a people. Lately. A good show goes by really fast. <laughs> this one has went by expeditiously. We will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Right? Yep. Tune in. Apple Music, Spotify, you name it. Make sure you tap in. We're here every Thursday. Indeed. Ooh. See you next time. The content on Macmillan and Morrow is provided as commentary on news and current events for entertainment purposes. Hey, everybody on the YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. If you like what you see, make sure you like and comment and share. Because we got to spread the joy, people. That's how it goes. See you next time.